Are you tired of having a pancake booty? We have an RDL variation today that you've never seen before and you have to add to your training regimen today. Coach Alex and Coach Sue here with Physique Development and today we are going to be teaching on the rotational B stance RDL. Now, a fun fact that you may not have known is that the hip is going to be a hinge joint, but it is also going to be a ball and socket joint. And so by doing this movement, we challenge the hip in a way that is different than just your normal RDL. And in the RDL, we're just simply going to be hinging. In the rotational B stance RDL, we're going to be challenging that ball and socket joint with a little bit of that rotation. The first question you may have is what is a B stance? I'll have Sue demonstrate for you. And what you're going to do is pick a dominant leg, the opposing leg, you will take heel toe and then a half step. If you take too long of a stride, What's going to happen here is it's going to hinder your ability to hinge. If Sue was to try and do an RDL here, she's going to be very limited on how much she can drive her hips back. Now that we have established our foot positioning, let's talk about how we're going to disperse the weight on your feet. That front foot is going to take about 70 to 80% of your weight, and the back foot is going to take about 20 to 30% of your body weight. Now, as we get into the hinge, we're going to have a rotational component, as I said. I'll have Sue go ahead and face forward here so you guys can see how she will be rotating alongside hinging at the hips. So as Sue is pushing her hips back, she's also going to be rotating away from the hip that she is wanting to train. This is really going to be lengthening those glute fibers as a whole and allowing for us to train the glutes through that rotational component. A common mistake we see our clients make when performing this exercise is going to be reaching with their upper body rather than rotating with their hips. And by reaching with their upper body, they're not going to be training the tissue any differently or having an impact on the glutes as we want. When we're looking at the coordination and the rhythmic activity of this exercise, it is going to be very important that as you are going into the eccentric portion and driving those hips back, that you're rotating away from the hip and then as you are going through the concentric portion, you're rotating back towards the hip. It is not going to be as rigid as your normal RDL of just forward and back. There's an extra layer to this with the rotation and you have to be cognizant of it. As you're practicing this exercise, really take your time to get the rhythm down first without any weight, and then that will allow for us to move into the weighted scenario and get the most bang for our buck. Now that Sue has the rhythm down for this exercise, we're going to go ahead and add weight. Now, we're going to load with just a single dumbbell in the opposite hand of the dominant leg that we're wanting to train. Here is your dumbbell. Show it off, girl. When programming this exercise, this is not going to replace the RDL within my sessions. I'm going to utilize it more later into the session, maybe into my accessory work. This is to add a little bit of diversity to our exercise selection. As we all know, we get a little bit tired of the redundant nature to our exercise selection from time to time. If you're still struggling with growing your glutes, I've got you. Hit the link in the description. We'll work one-on-one -on -one together and you'll have the juiciest glutes of your life. And if not, we'll see you in the next episode. Have a beautiful day.